Welcome to Live at Loop. It's Friday morning. This is our third episode of season three of Live at Loop. And today I'm going to talk about flow. Let's talk about where this idea comes from and why do we use that word and, and kind of how do we speak about it? This is the guy that started to study this concept. He lived through World War II when he was seven. And so he got really interested in how people dealt with things in their life. And he became a psychologist and he became really interested in happiness and how do some people deal with this and some people not. And he's, he's kind of known for putting this label on the psychological concept of flow. So a lot of these charts and ideas are kind of coming from his research and he's describing this uh, human experience. And the, the thing that really hit for me when I was hearing about it was uh, a quote from his paper, which is the best moments occur when a person's body or mind is stretched to its limits in a voluntary effort to accomplish something difficult and worthwhile. It's like happiness doesn't come when you're, it can, it, you know, it's fine to relax and chill, but that's not really what, it's not really what it's about. Uh, really what it's about is when you're in this kind of state. And he talks about in his paper, some different elements that people say, because he went and interviewed people in different cultures and, and kind of talked to them about what, what was happening or what are the attributes? What do they notice about that? It's kind of, these are the hallmarks. These are, these are the green flags that you're, that are in that state or what people describe, whether they're an artist or a scientist or just in a good, in a good space. So to me, the, the, the ones that I highlighted are the ones that, that I relate to the most, which was doing things that are really challenging, but feel effortless. And then the other thing is a sense of duration of time is altered. And I think we can all think of moments in our, in our life where we're like, oh, I just lost track of what I was doing. You know, you sort of snap out of it and you're like, oh, whoa, <laughs> what just happened? Like that's often an indicator of that kind of experience to me. So even in, in interviewing, sometimes people that would be talking about a loop sometimes when, if we were curious, if, if people had a lot of experience in that space, we just ask them like, can you talk about a time where you lost track of time? People that have had that experience or have that experience regularly, they they can, it's just like, oh yeah, of course, I'll, here's this and this and that. They, there's examples. And the interesting thing in the relevant chart is it's not a constant state. It's kind of a balance. It's a balance between your skill and the amount of challenge that you're taking on or the type of challenge that you're taking on and, and how well are they matched and this is not an engineering chart. This is a psychology chart. So it's just, it's just hand wavy with regions, but it's really interesting and helpful to, to speak about it in this way. You know, as you get more skills, you know, if you just move, if you just increase your skills without increasing your challenge, you're kind of moving to the right. Eventually you kind of get bored because you're like, eh, this is easy. It's too easy. But if you just increase the challenge too fast beyond your skill level, you get into this like, ah, I can't handle this. Um, and so there's this balance point, there's this channel called the flow channel where you're kind of, and it shows this wobbly line. Um, and I'll talk about the wobbly line in different, different ways, but a lot of the things that we're doing at loop, you know, I'm good at, cause I've been doing for a long time. And so sometimes when it takes something super challenging to get into that space, because I'm like, I've been on site, I've done, I've done a lot of stuff. I've been, you know, I'm a veteran developer and robot tamer. And so this really felt that way where it was like challenge pegged on the top, skill pegged on the right. And also all other, all the other people that we were with, all the other people on that team and everybody that was involved in that project basically were like fully at that, fully at that space. And that's really why it was really super fun. It's also why we do stuff like that because it feels like this is what I, I live to do. This is like, feels so good. Um, and so I just kind of drew it here. It's like your way up here. You know, and, and again, I know there were moments where we're like dipping into the anxiety place, like that's kind of, but it was, it was definitely like a big wave surf feeling um, the entire time. You can talk to everybody else who was there. And again, this is a real thing that happens. It's like a real story. This is one that popped out to me for, for my own experience. When we look at scorecards, there's applications of these ideas in scorecards. And one of the ones that's kind of counterintuitive is um, what's the right amount of green or yellow or red on a scorecard? Because if you're super green all the time, you're at the risk of getting bored. Like if you're not, if you're not finding the edge of what you can do in terms of challenge, you might be, you, you know, it's, it's going to, that feeling of engagement is going to wear off. It's not going to, it's not going to, you're not going to be able to sustain it. It's going to be like, what's next. And it can be okay to be comfortable for a little while. Like I'm not saying you got to be in flow channel all the time. And it's like, but if it's super green all the time, often when I'm looking at that, it's like, first of all, hell yeah, great job killing it. And like, what kind of challenges do we need to put on here 
to get more into that channel or find the upper boundary of the channel. Because if you're not pushing it, you know, you, you, we're really looking for that balance point of, of challenge and skill. And as the skills grow, um, that changes all the time. The other common example is if we take on things or we assign stuff to ourselves, that's really just too hard. I'm kind of, I'm super ambitious and maniacal sometimes. So I'll be like, no, I'm just going to do it. Like, I'm just going to go for it. The problem is if it's too far into that region, you blow up because you, you stop doing it because <laughs> you're like, it's too painful. It can't be sustained. Uh, maybe you can do it for an hour. Maybe you can do it for a month, or maybe you could do that for those three years, but it's not going, it's not, it's not a survive. You're not going to survive. And so you can, I, I can feel that you can feel that when it's happening. And so the move in those situations is to, you know, you can, you can increase some skill, but you can also di- dial back the difficulty because keeping it, keeping it in a sustainable place is, is what keeps you moving forward to be able to access those bigger challenges, more skill level. Like that's how you can grow without blowing up and stopping and just being like, I'm never going to touch a piano again. Cause that was too hard. I'm never going surfing again. Like that'd be my example. Forget it. I blew up on that. So those are things to look for in scorecard context in particular to be like how it, it, it should be kind of balanced. Like there should be, you know, it, a healthy one would have different, you know, or over the course of a year, let's say, or multiple years, a good amount of super green, like way to go killed it. And then like, how can we add more challenge to balance increasing skill levels? So the other thing I want to talk about is about practice. And I, I often talk with people um, it shows up in like video production a lot where I keep like the number one priority is to hit rate. Or I would tell people like the number one thing you have to do is put a video out every week. Like it doesn't matter how good it is. You just have to hit the rate. And the reason that that's so important is because it's practice. It's like, you're doing it all the time. You're repeatedly doing it all the time. Your, your skill level is your skill is going to move to the right. Your skills are increase, increasing. And so just like taking baby steps, you're moving to the right on this chart. But what that allows you to do then is to start adding more in, like taking on more, like, oh, I want to make the audio better, or I want to increase, I want to change the way my lighting setup works. Like as you increase your skill, you can put more into the work in a way that's sustainable as a way to kind of move up this channel. Whereas if we try to take on too much or we try to take on a big project, like, oh, let's do the first ever video and we'll tell like the entire story of Loop's history. You know, it's like, it's too hard. It's not going to, it's not going to work. It's going to blow up. It's going to be months into it. And you're going to be like, oh my God, I'm never going to make it out of this. And you're going to put it, walk away from it. It's not, and and probably be like, I don't want to do that anymore. (laughs) So it's important to find a way to practice in a sustainable way, to build those skills, to get all the way up this channel. And there's other versions of this chart. This one, this one was one of the less crazy ones that I think does have good information in it, which is the different kinds of feelings you have in the different regions. And down here, it's just whatever, who cares, right? Apathy. It's not challenging. It doesn't take any skill. It's like, it's not, it's not a good region to be in down here. Up here. Yeah. Wor- yeah I'm worried because I, my skill level is not up to the challenge. So I neither need to increase my skill or decrease the challenge to get into this space. And up here, really high, <laughs> it's like, forget it. Like meltdown, red zone, doesn't work. These up here can be okay because you're like, oh, it's kind of at the limit and it's just beyond my boundary. Like that's not necessarily bad. That can be an okay place because you're like, I, you can feel the edge or you can feel like, oh, that was, I dipped into it. Like when, when the robot was dead on the ground, I was like, this is a little too much, you know, like, or I'm, that, that was a little bit beyond my limit or right at my limit. And even feeling in control, that's fine. It's, it's okay to feel in control about, about something. But if that goes on too long, like you can just drift into these regions where you're really not engaging enough. It's really, it's like, what's next? It, 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 it ends up kind of drifting into these boredom and, and relaxation places. So I guess this is just a navigation for how's it feeling, you know, when we're doing our work or when we're, you know, again, this applies to anything in life, but really like, it really is helpful at work. This live at loop has been a good example for me because it's like, it's like, what if I did a presentation like this every week? And so it's like, it's intentionally a challenge. It's like signing up for something at a lot of our R and D projects or things that we've done. They're just made up like as, as challenges. You know, it's like, what if I, if I invited everybody to a presentation every Friday morning and then on Thursday night, I'm like, okay, it's game time better make one like, and it better be good because everyone's going to see it, you know? And so for me anyway, that was like something where it's like, yeah, I do want to explain this stuff, but what's going to be a fun and interesting, challenging way for me to do that, that I, that I'm going to do every week and get better at. It's not making presentations is easy, but making a presentation every Friday. That's good about loop is is still a challenge. Cool. Uh, Go do this. This is what we're doing. All of us. Hopefully this is, this is why we're here. Have a good weekend, everybody. Thank you.